Good morning, everyone. Final morning after of the regular season. And, uh, yep, here we are wrapping things up. New format on the board. We're letting the stars shine a different way. Right, Bob? <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, we had a uh, very interesting, intriguing end to the regular season. Uh, starting off in Michigan, where the Motor City Rockers and Port Huron Prowlers finished their 18-game battle, which Motor City had already won the series before last night's game. But Motor City comes out on top again. Uh, and the best crowd of the year, uh, over 2,100 at uh, Big Boy. So Motor City finishes off with an average above 1,000, which is good. Um, anyway, uh, Motor City ends up winning 6-2. to two. Uh, They started off hot. Goals by Avery Smith in the first. And then the second, it was TJ Delaney sh scoring shorthanded. A lot of shorthanded goals last night. Uh, Scott Coash scores at 11:24 of the second. That would end up being the game winner. Uh, Port Huron does make a game out of it. Gets a goal by Connor Foley, who has been a great find for the Prowlers. Um, then late in the second is Declan Conway scoring. Uh, early in the third, T.J. Sneath scores. So I mean, the game at this hand is already five to one. It's out of hand, um, but. So be it. Um, Alex Johnson scores for the Prowlers. That's the last goal of the season for the Prowlers. And then Tristan Wells puts a puck into an empty net at 1942. And uh, not many shots in this game. So shots were only seven apiece in the first. And then Port Huron outshot Motor City seven to six in the second. But a lot of these pucks found their way into the back of the net. So, yeah, so there's our shots at the, you know, after the our goal to, uh, tally. So, yeah, 24 shots for Port Huron, 25 for Motor City. Uh, Oscar Walgren takes the loss, um, and Trevor Babin gets win number 21 on the year. One of three goalies in the league to have 20 wins. All right, so... Um, yeah, a nice crowd on hand, and uh, so Motor City finishes off strong. We go to one of the two really big draws for the night, and that's Watertown, playing for their playoff lives, uh, taking on the Blue Ridge Bobcats. Final game of the year, of course, at the Apex Center. Good crowd on hand there. And uh, Watertown there were given an opportunity. They kind of missed it uh, Friday night. But they took full advantage last night. Uh, so we had goals early by Alexander Gamzadov. Now, <laughs> this is interesting. Gamzadov scores. Watertown celebrates the goal. Brings a new set of uh, people on the ice. Except there's a problem. Uh, one of the people on the ice is an illegal player. Illegal substitution as uh, Lincoln Gingrich was scratched and yet dressed and sitting on the bench. Interesting. So, uh, but, uh, so, you know, problem solved. Uh, referees meet and say, uh, okay, Gingrich, he can't play. And uh, two-minute minor, which, you know, nothing happened. So then, uh, anyway, Tate Neeson scores on the power play at 12.38. Carter Thornton scores on the power play at 17-22. That's the end of Connor Green's night. He started for the Bobcats. Owen Liskovitz comes in, plays the rest of the way out. Kozlowski, he holds a fort for, uh, for Watertown. Uh, Carson Andrioli scores the only goal of the second period for the Bobcats. But then the third, Watertown explodes for five. Um, at the, this point, it seemed like all the emotional energy had kind of gone out of the sails of uh, the Bobcats. So, yeah, the goal is by, uh, by Lindbergh, Mercurio, shorthanded, Thornton, Leeson, shorthanded, and Chase Tabari, shorthanded. Three shorthanded goals surrendered by the Bobcats last night. Now, in the middle of all of that, uh, towards uh, the middle of the period, Daniel Martin did score. So it was eight to two victory for Watertown. So, uh, meanwhile, 
uh, the game listed after them had already finished. So Watertown found out with about three and a half minutes left to go in the game that they had just clinched themselves a playoff spot as uh, Elmira falters in Binghamton. Uh, but for this game, yeah, Watertown, uh, 26 shots on goal, Blue Ridge 34, uh, but uh, Kozlowski played excellent, and uh, Mercurio ends up with a goal and three assists. Meanwhile, uh, Car Carter Thornton also had two goals and an assist. He had two goals by Leeson, uh, a lot of offense by Watertown. And uh, meanwhile, uh, only goals for Blue Ridge were Daniel Martin and Carson Andrioli. They both had a goal and an assist. Connor Green in 17-22, 5 of 8 in saves. Um, so anyway, that was the story there. So then we focus on Binghamton. And it looked for a while like Elmira was going to take this. Um, Binghamton starts off. In the lead late in the first, it's uh, Austin Thompson scoring. Uh, so it one nothing lead at the end of one. Uh, Binghamton, 16 shots to eight. Uh, second period, Elmira, they take control of the game. Uh, Binghamton kind of got caught up in their own defensive zone quite a bit. Uh, Elmira was doing a good job on circling the puck in the offensive zone. They get goals from Dustin Gesso. Uh, and two by Stephen Clink, who, you know, he led the team in scoring this year. So it is three to one at the 1817 mark of the second period. And Binghamton crowd's kind of quiet. The Elmira fans who came in, they're having a ball. And then the game changed on one play as Jake Schultz, um, when all Scott Stevens on uh, Justin Samaro laid him out. Looked like a clean hit, could have been a little high, questionable. But regardless, that was the play that changed the game. Uh, now, uh, Schultz ended up getting a 10 minute misconduct, not for the hit, but for some shenanigans that followed afterwards. Uh, so, Schultz goes off for a while. Uh, anyway, that really got the Black Bears stirred up. And suddenly there was an urgency to their game that wasn't there earlier. And they took control in the third. Goals by Kyle Stefan, who's becoming a great power forward. Uh, and then two by Connor Smith. Uh, he scores a 507, and then uh, after a hooking call on Kyle Powell, who, in my opinion, is probably the nicest guy on the ice. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just a fluky thing. Uh, he sits in the box, and Connor Smith uh, ends up capitalizing on the power play, and it's a 4-3 win for Binghamton, and Elmira is done for the year. Um, yeah, so Clink wasn't on him. Two goals and an assist on his part. Uh, Dustin Gisseau had a goal. And Sammy Bernard, 51, shot, uh, 51 saves on the night. Um, that This has been the Achilles heel for Elmira, is you can't give up 45, 50 shots a night. Um, not Sammy Bernard's fault. Anyway, um, so... Uh, Stefan ends up with a goal and two assists. Smith with the two goals. And Connor McAnanima, the starting goaltender for Binghamton, he goes 24 for 27. Sellout crowd in Binghamton as they watch uh, Binghamton win. Get ready to face the Watertown Wolves in the playoffs. And Elmira goes home. All right. So anticlimactic time. Um, every now and then a team has a stinker. Uh, and, and it's unfortunate, but it happens. Um, last night was that night for the Carolina Thunderbirds. It was a stinker. Um, and Thunderbird fans, don't panic, all right? Every team has a stinker. Even Columbus earlier this year had a stinker, all right? It happens. Um, and then the next game, it's forgotten about and life goes on. All right, so Columbus, 11-1. to 1. Uh, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because it was just an absolute goal fest. Uh, the game was decided pretty early 
has uh, five goals in the first. Goals by Kyle Moore, Cody Wickline, Ryan Hunter, uh, Alexander Jameev, and Justin McDonald um, on the power play, and it's 5 nothing. And you know, the game was pretty much over. Um, Mario Cavallari, uh, five goals surrendered on, um, what was it, 13 shots uh, in the first period. So Cardi, Cody Karpinski finished off the game. Um, three goals in the next two periods by, uh, by Columbus. They get another one by Wickline, another one from Justin McDonald, and Alex Georgiahan in the second. And then the third, Cody Wickline gets his hat trick. Congratulations to Cody. Uh, Alexander Jameev scores in the power play. Nolan Slaheta scores on the power play. And there you go. Um, so, yeah, an 11 to 1 uh, whitewashing. And again, Thunderbird fans, it's just one game. Things will be better when you start the playoffs. So don't sweat it. You know, shake it off. To quote Taylor Swift, I can't believe those words came out of my mouth. Damn, Taylor Swift. But anyway, all right. So, uh, Joe Kennedy, the only goal for the Thunderbirds late in the first. Um, yeah, two goals and two assists for Jay Mack. He finishes off with 117 points. Uh, Cody Wickline, three goals and an assist. And uh, Brendan Colgan, 15 out of 16 shots. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, 16 shots. That's all uh, Carolina managed. Uh, crowd, 47 25. So, Columbus misses the 100,000 mark. Uh, they end up with 99,077, but the next team did make it to 100,000, and then some. Uh, yeah, crowd of 68,96 in the Raisin Cane Center as Baton Rouge Zydeco. Um, they end up successfully getting out of the basement. This was their goal for quite a while. The Baton Rouge Zydeco finished the year 6-4. Uh, and four. Mind you, it was against Mississippi, but uh, anyway, Mississippi goes down. It's a three to two game. Um, yeah, so Mississippi ends 21 32 and 3, 4 19 in their last 23. Um, so anyway, Baton Rouge, uh, they end up with 51 points as opposed to Blue Ridge's 50. But hey, there's good things going on in both cities. Uh, there, there's stuff being built for the for the future. So um, anyway, congratulations Baton Rouge on successfully finishing fifth. And it was a success. Uh, the last uh, 20 games for Baton Rouge were pretty good. Um, okay, so in the game, Bradley Richardson scores in the first, as does Scott Chirac on the power play. No, it wasn't a Michigan this time, but that's all right. Uh, Chirac will take a goal any way he can get it. Uh, in the second period, no scoring. And then uh, in the third, Lucas Helen scores at 6.05. And then Danny Lissio scores shorthanded, another shorthanded goal, uh, to tie things up. And uh, Austin Mellon uh, playing pretty well. Um, ended up taking the loss, but uh, stopped 38 of 41 shots. Meanwhile, uh, Bailey Stevens didn't have all that much action. 23 shots spaced, uh, but he saved 21 of them. One more save than Mellon. So uh, Chris Hansen scores the game winner at 16-29, and Blue Ridge completes another sweep of the Mississippi Seawolves. It's 3-2, to two, shots are 41-23. Um, so, yeah, uh, top draw of the night for Baton Rouge and in the end, they outdrew Binghamton by 41 people. So 110,000 plus for Baton Rouge. Congratulations, you guys. 110,000 plus for Binghamton. So there's 220,000 right there uh, drawn this year. So excellent. So here you go. Here's our playoff seedings. And the first game is Wednesday night. Columbus uh, taking on Mississippi as they wear their uh, their. Bear paw uh, unis, uh, very, very sharp looking. Um, but that's first game. And then the series will shift to Columbus for the remaining two games, if necessary. Um, Carolina playing Port Huron uh, in Port Huron on Friday. The rest of the games are Friday. Uh, Binghamton taking on the Wolves in Watertown, 730. And Motor City and uh, 
Danbury last game of the year in the DIA, possibly. We will see. All right, so there you go. Let me know what you think about this format. And uh, lots of videos coming up this next week. Don't forget, tomorrow and Tuesday, the Fed Flash Awards. Hope you tune in. Hope you enjoy it. Monday, teaser, a little anticlimactic. But Tuesday, I think uh, you'll be very interested in some of the surprises uh, in store as I name my award recipients. All right. I'm still going to do a video later on on some factoids for the year as we finish things out. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, again, tune in tomorrow and hit like and subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks, guys. This is Gary Ryan for the Fed League Flash.